speaking to me now is the British middleweight champion and middleweight title contender, Liam Williams. Um, Liam, uh, a massive 2019 few. Um, before we actually talk about your last fight over uh, Atlantis Fox, yeah. um, you, you were scheduled a fight on that date, 22nd December, um, but you didn't have any opponent until fairly late notice. I mean, at what point did you know that you were going to be fighting Fox? Yeah, I, I knew probably just a couple of weeks before um, before he was announced that I was going to be fighting him or, or it was a very high possibility, you know. But, um, it's you know, it's like boxing. They need to get things signed and sealed before they can actually allow the information to get out. So I think we both kind of knew that it was on, but wanted to announce, you know, before anybody made a fuss about it, but you know, it was a good fight, uh, it came at a good time for me, you know, it's probably in a good position as well, so perfect, it, you know, the year finished the year with a, with a bang. I mean, I was just asking about Fox, how much notice you had, just purely because he's a unique middleweight in the fact he's so tall, I mean, he's six foot three, six foot four, six foot five, depending which stats you read. Yeah. Um, did you have to get special sparring in for that or did you do any different training for his height? Yes, you know, in terms of notice for such an awkward opponent, it, it weren't really that much, obviously. So we had to switch the sparring up and stuff. We had a guy called Shakan Pitters, who's a six foot four light heavyweight. Um, he was the, I would say, he's probably the main sparring partner for this fight. And... Yeah, and they had a lot of a lot of similarities, so it was a bit of an awkward one to prepare for. But you know, he was lucky we pulled in that sparring because it it fitted just perfect, and it it turned out that Peters was actually a lot bigger than him. A bit, he was more bigger than him than than what we originally thought. So when I actually went to the fight, it was like, oh, this this is easier than what I originally had set in my mind, you know. So when you were facing um, a guy like that, do you and Dominic sit down together and work out the tactics, or does Dominic say to you, right, Liam, uh, this is what we're going to do in this fight? Yeah, it's pretty much just Dom does it, and he's like, he don't actually say to me, this is what we're going to do in the fight. He just he tell me to do certain things in sparring and in training, and obviously I know that there's something that he's been watching, but I don't know why he's telling me to do it. But I just I listen and you know go about whatever he tells me to do. And a lot of times in the fights, I just do these things without thinking of them. And it comes off and I'm like, I've been doing that for weeks in the gym, do you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, we, we sat them together, fight week in the hotel. Uh, they had a smart TV there. So we we um, we stuck a couple of things on YouTube and whatever. And he's going through and he's saying different shots to use. And so, yeah, fight just fight week. That's it, just final bits of, you know, um, just picking out last little bits last little things and uh you know Dom's Dom's a master of uh tactics and everything he's taught me to do so far has been bang on so I got everybody to trust in him. Yeah well like I, I lost uh, Liam Smith on a final eliminator when I, for the uh, WBO light middleweight title. And then I got to the stage again and I thought, right, I've been here before. I failed last time. I'm not failing this time. Like, fuck that. I'm, I'm making sure I get it this time. So there was nothing going to take that away from me. I was I was pre prepared very well. And um, I just weren't going to fall at that final hurdle again, you know. When you actually got together for the weigh-in and the head-to-head -head and the, the press conferences on fight week, I know you said you had sparring similar to him, but were you surprised how actually tall he was when you got to meet him in person? Do you know, when I when I faced off him, I actually, I don't know why, but I think it's probably just a like bit of a bad-minded thing of obviously no one I'm fighting him. Um, I just, I just envisioned, envisioned him to be like some giant, much, even bigger than what he was. So when I when I finally squared up with him, it was like it's not that bad, you know. I I thought he was going to be bigger, so it was yeah, it was it was a positive for me when I first faced off with him because I thought this is going to be easier easier than what I thought, you know. 
And one, one question that um, a lot of boxing fans ask, ask on social media is when boxers like yourselves, world-class fighters, face off against each other at a, a weigh-in or a press conference, does that mean anything? Does that have, psychologically, does that have any effect on the fight? I mean, you just said there now that that almost give you a little boost. But yeah, there's obviously little things like if if I'm facing off you and you're very like you can't stop moving or you're you're very nervous and you just you just sense a couple of different things from you know different fighters and um their body language or whatever but as far as but like you know you've it's all, all the hard work's done by then and you've set your game plan all the all the hard training's been done the weight's been made so it's not a massive amount which can change really but um I said it's just a case of how you act when you're face to face, and if you're if you're nervous, if you're, I don't know, I don't, I don't take too much from it, but you know it is what it is. Really, the hard work's done. The fight itself, um, you you got off to a really good start. You landed lots of clean punches. I think you surprised a lot of people as well. The fact you were able to slip his jab so easily, or so relatively easily. Yeah, um, you know, I knew I had to go in and and put the pressure on him straight away because if I allowed him to get into a, a good routine and got settled with his box and landing the jab and doing what he wanted to do then I thought you know he could have run away with the fight because you know yourself you know boxing key and if you leave someone get comfortable and get in a good good rhythm then it's difficult to pull him out of it you know um, so yeah I just, I just thought I've got to go and stick it on him early make him know that you know just make him uncomfortable from the off and that's what I did I think it, and I think it paid off I mean, going into the second round of the fight, you got caught by what looked like a good right hand from people watching on television and ringside, and you seemed to stiffen momentarily. I mean, did that? I mean, how badly hurt were you, or were you hurt at all at that point? I'm not going to lie. He did buzz me. He didn't didn't like it. You know, I weren't on the verge of getting dropped or anything, but it was a bit for a couple of seconds. I was a bit like, fucking hell. I, I knew he'd nailed me proper. Like, you know, but it was a good right hand caught me kind of high on top of the head, and. Um, Take nothing away from him. He's a quality operator, and you know you need to be on the ball at all times with these kind of fighters. Because if you're not, if you get a punched, you know, a, a bit harder, who knows? He may he might have dropped me. He might stop me. So um, it was a good thing for me to have that because you know I can be hurt as well. We all can. So it switched me on, and then obviously you've seen from the second round, I upped my game again, and and that's where it was. Game over, really, it was a matter of time. Yeah, and from the second round on, really, you, you pretty much dominated the fight and he seemed to wilt under the pressure. Yeah, definitely. I think I think it took... I think I needed a little wake-up call, to be honest with you, because after the first round, I felt so in control. And I just thought, like, this guy's got nothing to, to bother me. So he nails me with the right hand and buzzes me momentarily. And I, think it was, I said, I think it was a good thing for me because it switched me on. And then from there he was not going back. He was, it was a matter of time before before he went, you know. And I think as well he was holding you a lot, trying to upset your rhythm, just trying to cling on there. I mean, did did that upset you at all, or what? Was you just went with the flow, so to speak? Yeah, you just just got to take it as it comes, really, and take what you can in terms of shots and when you can hit and when you can't. You know, it's like um, even every time he was going down, you notice he was just clinging on for dear life, like. Before I, when I stopped him, he actually took me down with him because he locked on behind my knees, and um, but yeah, it was just like you know, he was he was a bit awkward and he was trying to stop me from um, sustaining a good good attack. But I just I wasn't in the mood for allowing him to spoil. I was I was just, I was firing and uh, I said there was nothing to stop me. What uh, type of things was Dominic telling you in between the rounds? Was he? I presume you're trying to tell you keep calm or was he just telling you go for it or, or what? Yeah, just um keep calm but keep the you know, keep the what's the word I'm looking for? The sustained pressure but but clever, you know, don't just go all guns blazing because as you've seen, uh, you know, he, he had a decent punch as well and um who's to say I can't get it myself, so I had to go about it the right way and make sure that I didn't really give him no no chance of the fight and didn't allow him to get his foot in, you know. So, but yeah, it was just like, just keep that pressure on, keep, you know, after a couple of rounds we'll get there, you'll, you'll know you'll stop him. 
So uh, after that win, probably the biggest win in your career, certainly a name that American boxing fans and American boxing people will recognise. I mean, yeah. when, what does just that win mean to you in terms of your confidence? Uh, to be honest, my, my confidence has been flying sky high. You know? So beating him, to be honest, he doesn't really do anything for me. All it does is just like ease another guy out of the way. Give me that world title fight. That's that's all it was to me. Is just is another step forward to where I want to be. You know. And uh, the status of the fight before the fight, it was in all the press releases. Cause I went, did go back and check them. It was uh, announced as a WBO final eliminator. Yeah. Um, I put something on Twitter or Facebook saying Liam Williams is one. He get his final eliminator, and I was told by the WBO president put a tweet out saying that it wasn't the final eliminator. Um, what is the status of that fight now, do you know? I don't know, you tell me, Key. Um, I, I honestly don't know, what, why would they possibly um, you know, make the fight and tell everybody it's a WBO final eliminator when it's not? Well, they, can't just, they can't just decide that themselves, they have to get proof and whatever else. And I was under the impression that they, they put a WBO intercontinental title on the line, yeah? And as far as I'm aware, that's why they put that on the on the line because they needed it to be some kind of WBO title fight to allow it to be a final eliminator, which I don't know. I, you just don't know, do you? But um, I don't really care, to be honest with you. And I know that my next fight, and if not, the one after that is going to be a title fight anyway. So just as long as you keep running in front of me and I'll, and I'll just it's only so long you can be denied for and, and you know I, I know full well it won't be much longer because anyone they put in my way I'm just going to dispose of them the WBO champion at the moment is uh, Demetrius Andrade, 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 Andrade who's fight, fight, fighting Luke uh, Keeler from Dublin uh, next month I believe I mean what, what's your thoughts on that fight yeah I think it's a good fight you know um it's one which Andrade wins, uh, but n but not in an easy fight. You know, I think it's going to be either points win or late stoppage. But then, what I've seen of Andrade's recent performances, I I personally think he's struggling a bit at the weight because he's a very big guy, um, and he's always very good for the first four rounds. And after like four or five rounds, he fades, and I think that's probably a sign of how he makes the weight. I don't know, but you know that's that's my judgment of it, and I just yeah, I just think even if he beats Keela, I don't know if it'll be him. I'll end up fighting because I get the feeling he's gonna move up. I heard I heard a rumor the other day that he was gonna go up and fight Billy Joe for the super middleweight title. So, but again, I don't I don't really care. It's just about me getting my shot, and whether that be Andrade, Mangia, uh Spike, whoever wins, I don't really care. So there we go. It's just just waiting. It's a matter of time now. So have your team told you um, when it's likely to be, or I mean, will will you be looking to get a fight in between a world title fight, or will you will your next fight be for the title? Yeah, well, I'm I'm hoping my next fight is going to be for the world title because if it works out how I'm thinking, like I just said to you about, I think Andrade is going to vacate and possibly move up I think he'd probably do that shortly after his fight you know which puts me in position to fight probably uh, was it Jaime Mungia the Mexican so that'd be another great fight for me one which I'd, I'd love to take I haven't really heard anything solid from my team I've, I spoke to MTK and they're on to Frank but without dates given they you know Frank needs to give them the dates to to be able to put me or whoever else on them. And they haven't been provided the, with them themselves yet. So I, I guess you're in a position, you're just treading water at the moment, just waiting to, to get the nod. Yeah, exactly. I'm going back to, um, I've had two and a half weeks off. I've done a little bit here and there. Started back properly yesterday. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be there every day now. And then as of Monday, I'll start training twice a day again. So I'm going back to Sheffield Sunday or Monday and we go from there just as long as I'm taking over and in relatively good shape then 
you know, I'll be ready whatever date they give me. How was Liam Williams from the, say, the Liam Smith fights compared to the Liam Williams of now? Where where are the main areas you've improved as a boxer, do you think? Um, I th- I wouldn't really say so much of... I've improved slightly on my boxing skills. Um, I just brushed up on you know, defensive areas and things, I guess. But for me, it's more about where I've, where I've built myself like mentally more than anything because um, going up there, being around all these different fighters and I just think I'm a lot more switched on. I look after myself better in between fights. I I diet better when it's it, when I'm in the fight. I just find I'm a lot more switched on and I don't, you know, I don't throw my toys at the prom and want to go in for a kill. But it's just, it's, there's a number of little things, but mainly... Um, I would say mentally right over physically. And it's interesting as well, I think. Um, I was thinking about this earlier when I was driving you to interview. But when you started your career, you were probably known as um, a boxer who can punch a bit. Now your reputation, whether it's right or not, is, is a boxer, sorry, a puncher who can box, who can box a bit. Yeah. I said, it's funny how it works. And it's just, but obviously people can only go off what they've been seeing. And, my last couple of fights I've boxed a bit but like I have been going through people and I've been hurting them and sticking on them so I suppose it's just a case of why well, you see if I box out to my skin for my next two fights and you know fucking pull some like Sugar Ray Leonard shit and just you know go on the move and just pinging people with the job people are just going to be talking about how much of an amazing boxer I am do you know what I mean it's just like it's you you can only go off what you see in at that time and, and what they've been seeing is like a lot of it's been crash bang wall up so you know this is probably an accurate assessment Is it fair to say that you are now a middleweight boxer as opposed to a boxer who would consider dropping back down to junior middle if, if, if a fight came around? Yeah I definitely still consider it um, I'm still well open to offers I can I can make like middle but it needs to be a fight where I'm very motivated for and like if they said to me go to go to like middleweight fight Scott Fitzgerald or Ted Cheeseman no no disrespect they're good fighters but am I really going to get up for that much to to lose all that weight and be able to train hard and it's just it's unrealistic but then if they go you got like middleweight title fight against Julian Williams no problem at all I'll do it, I'll make, I'll make it happen. So this is a case of war fights and when they're offered, you know. And I, I don't know whether boxers are strange people. And mo- most normal people would try and avoid tough guys and guys frightening people. But you, you moved into weight division with guys like Glofkin. Um, Canelo Alvarez is still the franchise champion, wherever that is, with the WBC. Um Lots of good fighters. I mean, I, I guess with your mentality, you you'd be opening open to fighting any of those guys now. A million percent. Uh, to be honest, with you, I'd I'd prefer them fights. So they put a bit of fear into me, which I I find I perform better, I train better. Um, but going back to what you said, like f- fighters, no way, not even close to normal people. They can't be like what? Nobody in their right minds really want to you know get punched shit out of. Uh, you know, 12 rounds, put itself through these camps, we put ourselves through and, you know, the, there is a ca- uh, a carrot being dangled, there's big, there's some big rewards, but normal people don't want to do that stuff and I suppose that's that's why so many people love boxers because they're not normal and they, they just, you know, they're a little bit different, they don't come around too often. Um, putting promotional differences to one side, I mean, if you could pick any fight or any fight that the fight in the light middleweight division or middleweight division, who would you pick to fight? I've said a couple of times, you know, I'd, I'd love to fight Golo- uh, Golovkin. And it's not because I'm trying to be like, oh, you know, I'm f- I'm mad, I want, I, you know, trying to be the big man. I just think I just want to, I'm one of these people who I always want to challenge myself. And I fully believe that as long as I do the right training and listen to tactics and do everything correct, then I can beat the, the likes of Golovkin. He's... He's got tremendous power, like everybody's seen that. If he hits you, he's if he hits you flush, he's probably gonna put you to sleep, you know. But he's gotta 
try and avoid that and put your skills to the test. Do you notice now that, um, like I said, you've beaten a guy who's regarded as a world-class fighter. Um, do, do you notice people slightly treating you different? Like your phone is ringing for these type of media interviews more often and like people within boxing circles are treating you differently? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, you do get shown... I've always been shown a lot of respect you know, because because I show other people respect mainly. But, you know, you can see as as you come through and you get better and you win more titles, people do treat you differently, you know, they, Wipe your ass a bit more, but um, it's just one of them. You got to take it as it comes, and then like on the to the average man on the street, like it's changed like drastically. Like you get people. I can if I went out for a drink with my friends now after one of my fights, I can't enjoy myself because all I do is stand there talking about boxing all night, and I to be honest, with you, I don't really enjoy it. And people saying, "Oh, you must you must love it." Like people giving you attention and people. You know, just being so proud of you and stuff is nice that people, you know, realise, you know, what you're doing and appreciate it. But, like, to be honest with you, I'd rather be without there. And it, it pisses me off a little bit, to be honest with you. You can't live, you just want to live a normal life, like. Well, if you ever did have the fight with Glofkin or any of the big names, um, can you imagine how, how that would transform your life? In, not in terms of money and obviously be world champion, but in terms of media attention and publicity? Yeah, exactly. Like... As you say, the, the likes of someone like Golovkin or Canelo, then it just changes your life. Even even if you went and lost, like people are going up to you and it's going to come up to you in the street. What was it like? They'd be asking you questions like, "What was it like meeting Canelo?" Like, okay. he, they just ask all these crazy questions. But um, yeah, it'd be it'd be great. I'd I'd be willing to, I'd be willing to put up with it to to get one of them fights. You know, <laughs> but we'll see. Just I think I think if I keep winning, I don't. I don't see why the, these fights can't can come. What's the uh, the silliest or the strangest question a fan has asked you when you're out in the pub or you're out with your mates or whatever? Um, I've been at, like, loads of times before a fight, people come to my house saying, you go, are you going to win? <laughs> I can hope so. Um, or, like, I thought it it's not a question, but, like, I've been out before and I've been out the next day after a fight, maybe you get someone pissed up and they're like, Oh yeah, but you know what you should have done. You should have done this and they're trying to go through tactics. And you're like, one, it doesn't matter because the fight is done. It's finished, and I've won. And two, I'm not gonna listen to some of the shit that you were talking about because you're steaming. And even if you saw by you don't know boxing, <laughs> so like just just be quiet. Like I don't tell them to be quiet. You just gotta try and be polite and you're out in it. But you're like fucking, hell, give me a break. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I know you're number one fan. Um Put a little video on Facebook, I think it was, before your last fight, your daughter. So put a little video up saying my daddy's going to smash him or something along those lines. Yeah. My daddy's going to smash him. Do you know what? The, the video was actually... He, she didn't actually make the video uh, for him. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have made her do that, you know. But um, she made the video for Dom. I sent the video to Dom on Instagram. And I was just like... One Sunday, I was going back and I was feeling good. And... Uh, so I just said, like, I meant, like, smashing his hands to bits. And, I, and uh, so she'd done it. And I had it saved on my phone because I didn't send her. And I come through it and I thought, oh, it'd be funny to, <laughs> to stick it on and say that she's got a message from, you know. She's uh, she's funny with it. Yeah. And I think I asked you this the last time we had a chat. And um, your daughter, now she's getting older. And she, she she's starting to realise that she got a, her daddy's not like a normal daddy. Yeah, I think so. I think she starts to realise that now. She's like... Yeah, anything boxing, really. she sees boxers, she's like, oh, look, daddy, daddy. And she always goes, she always, like, not always, but she says sometimes about, like, oh, when I watch Don't Ellie and stuff, and she, she must be thinking, like, I watch, I don't know, programs on Peppa Pig on TV, how, how the hell are you on it? Like, do you know what I mean? But it's just one of them, she realises she gets a bit bigger and she'll understand fully, you know. And uh, how, how has uh, your daughter, has she been spoiled over Christmas? Yeah, too spoiled. I can't. I can't wait to go back. Chef, she's doing my head, you know. <laughs> she's uh, nah. She's she proper spoiled, and uh, and she knows that she can she can get away with certain things, and more with me than than her mother, because she knows I'm soft and like. I think it was a couple of days after Christmas, we went to Tesco, and she was like pretending to cry and not cry, but like pout. Yeah, but Dad, I really want these toys. I really. <laughs> and I was like, at first, I was like, no, and then as minutes went by, I was like. Uh, you know, I'm in an hour and 
after about 10 minutes, she had every one of them she wanted. <laughs> so she knows she can do it, and it's a bit of a pain in the arse. Like, I don't like giving in to her, but what are you doing? Okay, Liam, um, thanks for your time this afternoon, mate. I know you're very busy, and uh, no good luck for your training camp up in Sheffield, and hopefully you get the, the big fight soon, and uh, you get a big army of Welsh fans uh, following you, wherever the fight is. 100%. Not, uh, hopefully not too long now, not too far away. Okay, cheers, mate. Thank you, Liam. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Brilliant. Thanks, man. Thanks, man.